Yes, we'd like to thank everybody for being part of this series. I thought it would be three parts, but now it is four. I am going to separate the lecture from the equations, okay? Because the exercise, these examples will do that they'll take enough time by themselves. Okay, so, so far in Chapter 9, we have learned about linear combinations, linear functions, linear operations. We learned about matrix operations. We learned about linear transformations. These are all the things, orthogonal matrices, which it says the inverse is equal to the transpose matrix. Okay? We looked at all of those things, and we're going to be using these again to make some definitions and for us to understand what we're doing. We dealt with a little bit about rotation and reflection. Okay? And we talked about that with the sine and the cosine for the two, um, two dimensions and for three dimensions. Okay, then we moved on to um, um, part two, and that's when we dealt with linear dependence and interdependence. And that's where we find out if we have a series, a group, a combination of vectors, a, B minus A plus B minus C equals zero. They always have to equal zero for them to be independent. Okay, it says here, we say that the three vectors, A plus B minus C, are linearly dependent because A plus B minus C equal zero. The two vectors, I and J are linearly independent because there is no number A or B, not both, zero, such that the linear combination of AI plus BJ equals zero. In general, a set of vectors is linear dependent if some linear combination of them is zero if not all the coefficients equal to zero. All right, so that's what we learned about that. Then we learned about homogeneous equations, and we talked about homogeneous equations that we had in um, differential equations, okay? Homogeneous equations are never inconsistent. They always have the solution, all unknowns equal zero often called the trivial solution. If the number of independent equations, that is, is the same as the number of unknowns, this is the only solution. If the, so that means if we have, then which we always want, the number of equations to equal the number of unknowns, then we have exactly an exact solution. If the rank the matrix is less than the number of unknowns. There is an infinite many solutions. A system of homogeneous equations is in, in unknowns has solutions other than the trivial solution if and only if the determinant of the coefficient is zero. Okay, so we'll be, we've been doing a lot of testing to find out what is the condition of the determinant. Now we are studying, we are looking at the main part, our last part, which is linear vector space. Okay. Now, when we talk about linear vector space, what are we talking about? The set of all points, okay, in X, Y, Z, whereas all real numbers. That's what this represents, all real numbers, in a linear vector space defined by I, J, K. Okay, we have used extensively the vector R equaling xi, yj, zk, to mean a vector from the origin to the point x, y, z. 
there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the vector r and the point x, y, z. <coughs> the collection of all such points or all such vectors make up three-dimensional space, often called R3, which we have up there, real numbers, all the real numbers, or V3 for vectors, and E for Eulers. Okay? Then it says simply, we can consider a two-dimensional vector space, V2, of vectors R equal X, I, Y, J, or point X, Y, making up the X, Y plane. V2 might also mean any plane through the origin. The V1 means all the vectors from the origin to points on some line through the origin. So, we're going to draw some pictures, and you'll be able to get a better, hopefully, a better glimpse. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our what? Our X and our Y, and we have our I, J, K, okay? As it has a, a dimension, these are the dimensions, I, J, K, and here we have what the X value is, the scalar more generally, we can define an n-dimensional linear vector space with n basic vectors. Basic linearly independent vectors that span the linear vector space. So we talked already about what? Linearly independent. We talked about that already in our last meeting. Orthogonal the normal basis, all basic vectors, orthogonal or normalized. Okay? So that means they mean perpendicular. That's what the, the orthogonal and this normalization means. Okay? This I is perpendicular to K and J. J is perpendicular to K and I. And K is perpendicular to I and J. As an example. Okay. Many existing properties and operations we're going to be going through. So, what is the first one that we like to talk about? The inner product of A and B. It represents like this, the dot product. Now, what else we want to talk about? We want to also talk about A and B orthogonal, meaning that A is perpendicular to B. If A dot B equals zero. Okay, then we also would like to look at the normal. Okay, the normal of A is what? A squared, the square root of it. Okay, and we'll be using that a lot today. And we're going to be using orthogonal today. We're going to be using that product today. We're going to be using all of it. Schweitzer's inequality. Okay, and that's the dot product is less than a times B. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is transforms represent express <coughs> expressed by matrices. So we're going to do trans a lot of transformation. We're trying to take these long equations because they can get big. Okay, and trying to shrink them down into little small such that this equation here, 5x minus 2y equals a x1, as an example. Okay? And then we have here, what? Minus x plus y equals x2. Prime. Okay? So these are what this represents here. And this has this x and a y. Okay, so it's letting you know that this is a vector, these are the vectors, this is the matrix, this is the matrix, this is the matrix, this is the vector. Okay, so now when we take it off into bigger spaces, what do we have? Okay, right here it lets us know that we have one, two, three, four, four variables. One, two, three, four, four variables. And we have uh, 
a four by four what? Matrix. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? And each of these components in each column represent each one that rep represents a vector position. Okay? So you can write it out this long way, or you can write it out this very short A, X. Isn't that much? You save so much room there? Yes. So this is what we're doing here. So as you can see here, this T is a function of X. And X is the vector. Now this X could be X, Y, Z. It could be any type of X. It's not just X, as you can see here. It's X, Y. As you can see here, it's X, Y, Z, and W. So there's a lot that goes on here with these little definitions and terminologies. Okay, now we're looking at the Gram-Schmidt method. Okay, in this theory, we're looking here, we see that we have A, we have B, we have an angle in between them of theta, and then we have C, and we have B projected onto A. Okay. So when B is projected onto A, as you can see here, okay, this is, says, have A and B, two vectors, but we want vector C, which is perpendicular to A. So as you can see, Y is perpendicular to X, and C is representing the Y, and A is representing the X and is and in the same plane as AB. AB is in the XY plane. There's no Z plane. Okay, so they're in the same plane. Okay, now what we want to do is subtract the projection of B. Okay, the projection of B, that's what we have, onto A. Okay, from B. So we're going to show you how we're going to do that then we can extend an n dimension starting with vectors, as we said, x1, x2, x3. Okay, so as you can see here, we have here B is being projected, as we said, onto A. And so what do we have to do? We have to come up with the orthogonal of A, okay? Or we get the normalization of A, and that's what this is, the normalization. It has no, it has a unit of one, okay, length of one, that's all it has. Okay, and it has this unit, which is A. And so this is what this represents. So when we multiply, when we take the norm of this, we're taking the, the vector itself, and then we're normalizing it and giving it direction. Okay, the direction, and then we're going to divide by the magnitude of it so that we can have this equal one. So that's what this represents. This um, is just telling it's going in its direction and we're projecting B on it. Remember, what are we doing? We're doing the dot product here. Okay, so we take it up here. And what are we going to do next? Ah, as you can see, we have the projection, subtract the projection of B onto A. Okay, so this is the projection of what? B onto A. This is what that projection is. And we're going to subtract that. From what? From B. Okay. And so we look at our first equation. Okay. Our X1. What is going to be that equation? And so we're going to take the absolute value of that on the bottom. And we're going to keep the vector on top. Okay. So this is called the normalization of A of X1. But this is in this example, this is the normalization of EA. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we want to find out for vector 2, okay? So, this B would be vector 2, okay? And so, to get this normalized, as we said, okay? And then we want to, um, we, we want C, which is going to be perpendicular to that 2 plane, to the plane, and to also to be in the same plane as A and B. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're normalizing, as you can see here, which we already talked about, already projected onto B, is projected onto A, and so basically what we have here is 2 is projected onto 1. 
okay? And then it gives us E2, then we have to normalize it again. Okay, and once we normalize it, okay, whatever we get here for Y2, we have to normalize again so that we can get the final answer. It's not just going to be Y2, we have to normalize it. Then when we come down again, we could do this for infinite number of points. Okay, just example for Y3, same thing. We find out what the normalization is, and we're going to multiply it times the normalization of the first one, times E, then that, that same vector multiplied times the normalization of the second one, subtracting both of them from the, rich, from the original text, from the original, I mean, from basically here, C, okay? And so what we do this, we do this for I terms. And we can keep doing that, but we always got to remember we have to normalize it once we find out what Y2, Y3 are. Okay? So we hope that you understood this. We hope that this will be useful to you because we are going to now use examples of this. Okay? We thought this was a little heavy, and so we divided this, the theory from the application. So thank you. We hope to see you in the next lesson. Have a nice day.